we're on to chapter 12, part 3. This is about Scotland and about how Dad had to go to Scotland to get some sheep and about man who had to stay behind and felt trapped. We went to Hull Fair in the last part and there was somebody else that was trapped as well and that was the littlest woman in the world who had to stay and exhibit herself and she really wanted to live elsewhere and live her own life. And of course there were the goldfish who were trapped in the bow and that died. This part tells us when Dad came back, we ended the last part, when he came back from Scotland with Uncle Sid and we were really shy of them suddenly because they were like strangers, they'd been away for so long. But the other thing was, my dad looked thinner than when he went and I knew that it was because he'd not been able to get used to the food in Scotland. I never thought that he would. It's all mountains covered in heather, said Uncle Sid. And there's men in kilts. And they played bagpipes when we went into the hotel. Dad didn't say anything. And just came into our house and sat down near the fire. And Mam got him a mug of tea and a big piece of apple pie. He ate it hungrily. He put a crumpled carrier bag on our table with presents for us all. Our Katie had a hanky, say handkerchief, said ma'am. It had Frey Bonnie Scotland embroidered on it. Our Gwendy had a silver heather brooch. And I had a tiny metal Scottish dancer wearing a kilt and playing bagpipes. I put some cotton on it and tied it onto my charm bracelet, just next to the Scotty dog. I thought they could keep each other company, what with them both coming from Scotland and all. We were very pleased with our presents. Mam was last and she smiled a beautiful smile and took her present in its brown paper bag out and peeped inside. And that was when everything changed. Mam's face went white and her lips went tight. And she didn't even put a hand in the bag. She just slammed it down on the table. Dad didn't ask what was the matter. He just went upstairs and got into his working clothes and went out to see his animals. Mam shoved the paper bag angrily at the back of our table drawer with tears in her eyes. A bit later that day, when she was outside working, I had a look in that bag to see what sad thing he had brought. I pulled out a peeler and an apple corer with a wooden handle and a shiny blade. I couldn't understand what was wrong with them. They would be a big help when she made apple pie. But she didn't want them. That much was clear. And that night I heard her talking to Dad. There's more to life than gum and work, you know. I didn't hear what Dad said to her, but I knew he would just say, you'll get used to it. But I didn't think that she would, because nowadays she looked so sad. No more was said, but I noticed that when Mam was rolling her pastry next time, she banged her rolling pin down on her board just that little bit harder than she had ever done before. I often saw that faraway look in her eyes that I'd seen in Melanie's eyes when she didn't want to be at our school. And Mam never used that peeler and Cora, and soon the steel went rusty and the wooden handles went mouldy. Then one day Mam chucked them out. 
But long before that, our new sheep arrived on a big lorry from Scotland. We all stood round while the lorry rolled into our stackyard. The big black doors were pulled down to make a ramp and we could see the little sheep with a wild look in their eyes. I expect they didn't like flat gum very much. They were looking forward to their mountains in Scotland again. But Dad had got a nice sheep pen ready with a fence round it. Keep boy, keep boy, we shouted, which as we all knew was the sheep language for come on. But these sheep were from Scotland and of course they couldn't understand sheep English and so they just stood there and would not come out. The drover had to get in the lorry and grab their woolen backs and push them one by one. Dad's pen was in our paddock and his idea was it would help them settle in before they went into a bigger field. But they didn't like our farm or being stuck in that pen one little bit. They pushed and rammed at the fence and jumped wildly. They'll get used to it, said Dad. Just give them time. But they kept on breaking our fences down. And when Dad put them in horse pasture field, they just pushed through the hedges and kept on breaking out. Dad had to keep on putting new fencing in to repair the hedges. They never did get used to being at gum. Those sheep wanted to be free to roam their mountains in Scotland. But of course, they didn't have that choice. They had to stay at gum forever trying to break out, which they often did. And they were a real nuisance. So Dad and Uncle Sid never went to Scotland for cheap sheep ever again. We heard about Melanie and her mam just once more. Uncle Sid read it out of the whole Daily Mail while we were having tea one day. Local woman marries fairground escapologist. It was only a few lines and in very little print, but my mam smiled a beautiful smile because she was pleased to hear that Miss Pratt was not shameful any more. And I was pleased because it was nice to see Mam smile. She did not smile very much these days. Then one day Mam announced, I'd like to go away for a bit for some excitement. I don't always want to be stuck here at gum. Dad didn't answer and I knew that he wouldn't understand and he just carried on eating his apple pie. He would think, as he always did, that Mam would get used to it. And I got a bit frightened in case she ran off like Melanie and her Mam had done. My Mam didn't run off though, and nothing more was said. But the next time Auntie Cecily came from London to see Auntie Peggy, Mam packed a bag and went back with her for a holiday down south. When she came home, she was full of smiles and full of stories about exciting things she had seen. And she'd been in some posh cafes where people went who had gone up in the world. And she told us how they drank out of little cups and ate little slices of sponge cake with strawberries on the side of the plate. Then next time it was baking day, Mam made a sponge cake instead of the apple pie because that's what they ate in London. I don't like this cake, said Dad, with a mouth full of dry sponge. I'd rather have your apple pie. You'll get used to it, said Mam, and she smiled at him with a beautiful smile. But he never did get used to eating sponge cake 
instead of apple pie. I never thought that he would. <laughs>